Welcome to Thermod Action at Gulfstream Park. I'm Katie Stazak, TGIF. It's Friday, and we have a great 10 race card on tap for you today here at Gulfstream. Plus, we have carryovers in both the Rainbow Six and the Pick Five. It's a double whammy, and you're not going to want to miss it. Here are the track and weather conditions for today's program. We start the day with a good main track and a good turf course. The first race on the card is a $12,500 claiming event. Three-year-olds and up, which have not won three races or three-year-olds, will be going a mile on the turf course. Scratch the two, the seven, and the nine. Also, Matthew Rispoli will be on the three. Hudson Miracle. Racing at Gulfstream. From the outside, Louis the Brawler and Ratnik both begin nicely. Street Rage is away well. He's third early from Hudson Miracle, who comes out of there racing fourth. Toward the outside, Simferopol is second last, and the early trailer is unsaintly. He's down toward the inside and about six lengths off the lead. They run into the opening turn with Louis the Brawler out where he wants to be, on top by a length and a quarter. Kept out in the center, Ratnik is there, second from Street Rage, who's well held early. He's third. In front of Hudson Miracle, fourth for Matthew Rispoli, a length and a half better than Unsaintly, and the trailer is Sim Farapol. Separated by seven and a half lengths as they leave the turn and straighten out for their journey up the backstretch. On top, it's Louis the Brawler, three parts of a length. On the outside, Ratnik is still second. Hudson Miracle moves up a spot to be third. Street Rage keeps his spot toward the inside. Racing second last early is unsaintly while three wide and five lengths to Simferopol. They move down the back stretch now and continuing up top, it's Louis the Brawler in front. From the outside, Ratnik is second toward the rail street rage, now third. In fourth, while well held, is Hudson Miracle, a length and a half in front of Unsaintly, and trailing the field is still Simferopol. Not much change in the plot here as they take it around the far turn. Louis the Brawler doing the heavy lifting. Here's Street Rage from between horses. He's now second and he's coming on. Hudson Miracle is four wide getting around Ratnik. The other two have tailed off and they run to the top of the stretch. Street Rage just ran up to take the lead while confidently handled. Louis the Brawler will have to battle back second. Three lengths better than Hudson Miracle third. Then Ratnik fourth into the stretch. Street Rage now shaken up and moving clear. Louis the Brawler is second. Hudson Miracle on the outside. Back fourth is Ratnik. But inside the final furlong, it's Street Rage. Street Rage and Jonathan Gonzalez travel powerfully inside the 16th pole. And they'll win the Friday opener by a length and a half. Hudson Miracle second in front of Louis the Brawler third. Ratnik was fourth in 140 flat. Street Rage is a comfortable winner of the Friday opener. Jonathan Gonzalez was aboard for trainer Michael Petro and owner Frank Calabrese. Street Rage returned $4.20 for the win. That'll bring us right to the second race, a $6,250 claimer. Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up, which have not won three races or three-year-olds, will be going a mile on the main track. Scratch the five, bullheaded lady. There. From the center, that's Starship Lisa who gets the first call. Climate change moves up to the inside to challenge. Up on the outside, it's Elnath away in the top flight. And down to the rail, BT's baby. No clear-cut leader as they run out of the one-mile shoot. In fact, they're separated by about three lengths. And up on the outside, Elnath now takes the lead by a length. The heavy favorite climate change is on the inside racing in second. From between horses at Starship Lisa, third, Fee and Sugar on the outside. BT's baby second last and just to her outside, BL's dream is the trailer, situated about three and a half lengths off the lead. They went the opening quarter in 25 seconds flat, so it's a reasonable tempo being set by Juan Lopez and El Nath. They stretch the margin to two now. Racing in second is the favorite climate change with the second choice Starship Lisa on the outside third. BT's Baby is now fourth from BL's Dream, and Fee and Sugar is the trailer. Less than half a mile away, they went 48 and 4 for an opening half mile, so they quickened up in the second quarter. El Nath now working to hold the lead. From between horses, it's Tuck Climate Change on the outside and Starship Lisa. These three have put five or six lengths on BT's Baby, then Fee and Sugar, and BL's Dream. Five sixteenths away, El Nath still holding the lead. Climate Change from between horses is asked to quicken by Sudin. Three wide is Starship Lisa. From the back, Fee and Sugar continues to grind away from fourth around BT's Baby after three quarters quarters and 113 and 4 into the stretch run and on top El Nas still has the lead climate change in tight between horses Starship Lisa's on the outside third three better than Fee and Sugar final 16th El Naf is still in front climate change is still red but tight between horses she's battling on second but El Naf is hanging on second climate change third Starship Lisa fourth Fee and Sugar at 140 and 3 
Belknap holds on to take the second race. Juan Lopez was the winning rider for trainer Rodolfo Garcia and owner Rod Garcia, Inc. Elnaf paid $15.60 to win. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more racing after this. Sharman goes down the outside. Sharman goes chasing Danish Dynaforma. Danish Dynaforma. Sharman goes. And Sharman goes. Takes the Queen's Plate. A length. And taking the 156th running of the Queen's Plate is Shaman Ghost, beautifully bred by Ghost Zapper. Classic Bloodlines, Classic Sire, Ghost Zapper, standing at Adina Springs. The third race is a $50,000 maiden claiming event. Two-year-olds will be going seven furlongs on the main track. No scratches, but one jockey change. Sonny Leone will be on the one Magic Sparkle. And they're up. From the inside, Golden Pirate runs the break and will establish the lead. From between horses, Eric's Talisman moves to challenge. Moving up on the inside is Magic Sparkle and wide on the course is Wanna Follow Me. Then in between horses and now moving to second is Street Brilliant. Widest of all, Anderson's AP at about the six or seven path, but moving forward. Two better than Magic Sparkle, followed by Little Chuck, and the early trailer is Grand Identidad. They make their way down the backstretch. They carved a quarter in 23 and one. It's Eric's Talisman at six to five in front for Gaffleone leads it by a length and a half. Golden Pirate sneaks through on the inside to be a joint second. Alongside Street Brilliant, who's third. Then Anderson's AP and Wanna Follow Me, followed by Magic Sparkle, who's four better than Little Chuck. And the trailer now is Grand Identidad. They run around the far turn, and Golden Pirate, the second choice, just ran up to take the lead. Eric's Talisman fights back, and these two pour on the speed. At the 5 16 they're eight lengths better than a rallying Magic Sparkle. Anderson's AP did not go on with Wanna Follow Me and Little Chuck. Quarter of a mile left left to go and on top it's Golden Pirate he puts away Eric's Talisman and appears to have this well in hand off the top of the turn Golden Pirate bids this field a pleasant rainy good afternoon six or seven in front and still moving off Eric's Talisman is all out to hold second down the center of the racetrack it's a late run from Magic Sparkle then it's Golden Chuck but in deep stretch it's Golden Pirate and Miguel Vasquez impressively Golden Pirate puts it all together and wins by seven Eric's Talisman second Magic Sparkle third little Chuck fourth in 126 and 3. Golden Pirate draws off to take the third race, breaking his maiden in his sixth career start for trainer Juan Andres Rodriguez. Miguel Vasquez was aboard the winning owners, Golden Legacy Stable LLC. Golden Pirate paid $6.20 to win. The fourth race is a $10,000 claiming event. Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, will be going seven furlongs on the main track. Scratch the three, the four, the five, the six, and the ten. Also, Jose Alvarez will be on the nine. Starship Shoddy. They're off. From the center, dream come true, showing speed, ridden hard, Starship Shotty toward the rail and moving to take the lead is Secret Fascination. It will be Secret Fascination in front as they leave the chute. Dream come true is away racing in second from Miss Motivation, who's now third. Starship Shotty ridden out of the gate, but racing fourth early, and she's two lengths better than Rain it in. Down the back stretch they go, and on top, it's the gray. Secret fascination, three parts of a length. Dream come true is second for Gaffleone. Three better than Miss Motivation, third. Rain it in, moves up on the inside to be fourth. She's now into third, and trailing is Starship Shotty. Past the half mile and taking it to the far turn. They carved a quarter in 23 and one. Dream come true, just took the lead at the three furlong point. Leads it now by a length from Secret Fascination second. Starship Shotty working harder in third and then to the inside, rein it in and Miss Motivation bows out. There's five sixteenths to go. Dream come true has this to throw away. She's confidently handled and four on top. Racing second is Starship Shotty, rein it in now third. From the rail and fourth is Secret Fascination. They went 46 and one for an opening half mile and they're into the stretch. Dream come true, still four in front. Toward the outside, Starship Shotty, toward the inside, rein it in, final furlong. Dream come true, shrugging off all challenges, still three in front. Rain it in has moved up to second now from Starship Shotty, but Dream Come True is a three to five winner. It's Dream Come True in front by three in the end. Rain it in got second, Starship Shotty third, Secret Fascination fourth, and 125 and two. 
dream come true was much the best in the fourth race. She is never challenged under rider Tyler Gaffleone. Ralph Nix was the winning trainer, the winning owner's Sunshine Thoroughbred Corporation. Dream come true paid $3.20 to win. Let's get to the fifth race. This is a $12,500 meeting claimer. Two-year-old fillies will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. No scratches or jockey changes to report. Sarah, Dreaming of Sue wins the break and immediately establishes a length and a half lead. From between horses, bookkeeper Marie and drama princess, her stablemate come away in the top flight. At the rail, that's Be Sure Lisa. She's now a joint third. Wide on the course, but improving is King of Jack, a length and a half better than Jamie's Good, followed by Slide In, and the early trailer is Under My Skin. They move past the half mile, and Dreaming of Sue dominates here early, leads it now by five lengths. Racing up on the outside, that's King of Jack in second. Drama Princess third, Be Sure Lisa toward the rail fourth, followed by Stacy's Reflection. Then to the outside, that's Slide In, retreating Bookkeeper Marie, and the trailer is still under my skin. They run at the 5 16th, Dreaming of Sue confronted now by Edgar Zayas aboard King of Jack on the outside, and King of Jack just took the lead, swishing the tail, but in front. From the outside, and now gaining ground into third is Slide In. They're at the top of the stretch, they went 47 seconds for a half mile, 47 Seven and four, in fact, and on top of the field, it's the first time starter King of Jack. Slide in is second and trying to get after the leader. Late run from under my skin through the final furlong. Well prepared in the debut run by Victor Barboza. Here's King of Jack. King of Jack is the queen today. She's in front by six. Second is slide in in front of under my skin. Then Jamie's good. King of Jack is a runaway winner of the fifth race. Edgar Zayas was in the irons for trainer Victor Barboza Jr. and owners Doble Jack Investment, LLC. King of Jack returned $16.80 for her victory. There's a new day dawning in Florida. Never before has a Breeders' Cup Classic winner retired to stud in the Sunshine State. Until now. Adina Springs presents three-time grade one winner and earner of over $4 million, Fort Larned. New to Adina Springs South. Welcome back. Here's the sixth race, a $12,500 maiden claimer. Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, will be going seven furlongs on the main track. Scratch the three, the four, the six, and the ten. And they're up. Last in, first out, Annabella Hall gets the first call. Tricky entry, quickly up to take the lead, though, with the gray Dees Causeway to the inside. Second. Out of their third is Kitten Star with Annabella Hall next. Bella Dixie is second last, and the early trailer is one and done. They're chasing the long shot leader, Tricky Entry, and Louis Castillo call the shots by a length and a quarter. On the outside, Annabella Hall has now moved up to be second in front of Dee's Causeway. The gray is pocketed up third. Then it's a length back to Kitten Star. The class dropper races in fourth in front of Bella Dixie, who's second last, and one and done on her outside is the trailer. They make their way down the back stretch after an opening quarter and a casual 24 seconds flat. Tricky entry has the lead. Annabella Hall's in a tricky spot as Kitten Star moves on the outside. So Panici goes now with Annabella Hall to take the lead. Kitten Star is there. Second back to third is Tricky Entry. One and done. Runs it up from the back. Bella Dixie between horses with D's Causeway. And there's less than three furlongs to go. Now they're at the 5 16 Annabella Hall leads it by a neck. Kitten Star's under a whip ride. Second D's Causeway has an inside opportunity. And Bella Dixie tries to run with her. Meanwhile, one and done is in with the shot on the far outside. They're at the top of the stretch, and Annabella Hall has three sixteenths more to get. One and done, and Jaramillo on the outside coming on second toward the inside, and Bella Dixie through the final furlong. On top, it's still Annabella Hall. Bella Dixie and one and done move at the leader. Annabella Hall, Bella Dixie surging on the inside. One and done on the outside. Here's one and done getting up. One and done. One and done gets the victory in race number six today. Misael Jaramillo was aboard for trainer Oscar Gonzalez and owners OMG Stables, LLC. One and done paid $18.20 to win. On to the seventh race. This is an allowance. 
Phillies and mares three-year-olds and up will be going a mile on the main track. No scratches. We have a field of six here, but there's one jockey change. Luca Panici will be on the one. Curlin's Princess. Zero. Starship Tammy bobbled at the beginning. From the rail, Curlin's Princess is away quickly. Moving with her in the early stages is Garden Princess. Then on the outside, Tar and Feather. Tar and Feather will cross and clear from the six post and lead it now by a length and a half. Garden Princess sets up shop second from Kinsley, who's now third. Carl Curlin's Princess down to the rail. It's a bit awkward there. In between horses, Roll a Gal and trailing with a field is Starship Tammy, but she's only about four lengths off the lead. They went an opening quarter in a sharp 23 and 1. Tarin Feather and Eddie Castro call the shots by a length and a half. Garden Princess second, Curlin's Princess third. Kinsley is now fourth in front of Starship Tammy, and Rolla Gal is now the trailer, but she's six lengths behind. Less than five furlongs to negotiate, and Tar and Feather can still in front. Now at the half-mile pole by a length and a half. Garden Princess second, Curlin's Princess third. Kinsley, the favorite, will have to work from there with Starship Tammy on her outside and trailing the field as Roll at Gal. They went 23-1 and one for the quarter, but they went 46-2 and two for a half-mile, so the speed has been sharp here, and Tar and Feather still has the lead. Garden Princess is now trying to offer a charge. She's not gaining much ground. Curlin's Princess is. She's coming on in the altar colors into second inside of the three now as they run to the top of the stretch. Kinsley is next with Rolla Gal on the inside. Three quarters, 111 and one. They're at the top of the stretch. Here's the bid from Curlin's Princess, who now takes the lead. Trying to stay on second is Tarn Feather down the center. Kinsley now finally offering a charge. She's gaining good ground. She'll get up into second, but time ticking away to catch Curlin's Princess, who's clear to the finish. Curlin's Princess by two and a half. Kinsley got second. Garden Princess third. Tar and Feather finished fourth in 137 and one. Curlin's Princess kicks clear to take the seventh race. Luca Panici picks up the mount today and gets the win for trainer Marty Wolfson and owners Alters Racing Stable Inc. Curlin's Princess paid $11 to win today. The eighth race is an $8,000 claiming event. Three-year-olds and up, which have not won three races or three-year-olds, will be sprinting five furlongs on the main track Again, this race originally scheduled for the turf has been moved to the main track. They're off. From the inside, Nantucketeer gets the first call. Waka Paquito moves to him on the outside. Eighth on is three wide and early third, and a length better than one-eyed Candy Ride, followed by All About Diva, who sets up shop fifth. Two lengths better than Guderian. Then to the inside, Tease two-step in front of an outside running Drover Road into the rail, Casanova Way. They run around the far turn. Aka Paquito at the three furlong point leads narrowly. All about Diva. Four to a four wide and moving a charge now with eighth on between horses. They're a length and a half better than one eyed Candy Ride toward the rail. Nantucketeer as they run past the quarter mile pole. All about Diva bids up on the outside to take a narrow lead. Eighth on tries to stay on second. Aka Paquito retreats on the outside and one eyed Candy Ride. Three sixteenths to go. All about Diva now shaken up with the lead at the eighth pole. Eighth on tough foe battles right back and one eyed Candy Ride down the center of the track. Inside the funnel, 16th, it's All About Diva who has the lead. One-Eyed Candy Ride and Athon both coming back. All About Diva, Athon, One-Eyed Candy Ride, All About Diva. All About Diva prevails close for second in 59-2. and two. All About Diva gets up to take the eighth race. Edgar Zayas gets another win on the card. This one is for trainer David Braddy and owner George Kerr. All About Diva paid $9.20 to win. Glad to have you back with us. Let's get to the final two races of the day. The ninth is a maiden special weight. Two-year-old fillies will be going a mile on the main track. The one to two favorite is the two chief attraction. 
From the inside, Platinum Band. From the outside, Will Be Magical is showing speed. And between horses, Holy Treasure moves to challenge as they run out of the one-mile shoot. The Jacks are better colors. will lead the way with Platinum Band, who's on top by two. Now moving up to be second is the race time favorite, Chief Attraction. Stablemate Will Be Magical is on the outside of Holy Treasure, a joint third. Then it's back to Proud Lady, who moves up a spot, a length better than an inside running Sweet Point, followed by Flyer in the Sky. And the trailer is Diplomatic Affair. They went a opening quarter in a sharp 23 seconds flat, moving along up the backstretch with Platinum Band by a length and a quarter. Chief Attraction tugging at Leva, wants to do more. Well, Leva says not yet. Two lengths in front of an inside running Proud Lady. Then to the outside will be Magical, followed by Holy Treasure. Getting underway is Diplomatic Affair in front of Sweet Point, and the trailer now is Flyer in the Sky. They take it to the far turn. They went 46 and 3 for a half mile. Chief Attraction can wait no more. Now set sail for the money and two on top. Proud Lady got a crack on the shoulder to get after a second. Two lengths back to Will Be Magical. Third, trying to rally from the back is Di Diplomatic Affair with five sixteenths to go. On top, Chief Attraction. Leva sitting very confident aboard this runner at the quarter pole on a three-length lead. Proud Lady is doing everything she can, but what she can is not enough as they pass three quarters in one twelve and th two. They're into the stretch, and Chief Attraction is four in front. Proud Lady is absolutely determined to stay on second from the inside. Third now is Diplomatic Affair. They come to the wire. It's all Chief Attraction. Chief Attraction worth the hype here, moving away to win this and win this easily. It's going to be Proud Lady saving second in front of Diplomatic Affair third. Chief Attraction heavily supported at the betting window today impresses in the ninth race. She breaks her maiden in her second career start today for trainer Bill Kaplan and owners Pinnacle Racing Stable LLC and Norman Stables LLC. Chief Attraction, a two-year-old daughter of 40 grams, paid $3 to win. The 10th and final race on today's program is an $8,000 claimer. Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up, which have not won two races, will be going a mile on the main track. Originally scheduled for the grass, it has been moved to the main track. Scratch the three, the five, the eight, and the 10, the 11, and the 12. Also, Pedro Monterey Jr. will be on the six, Tartalita. Ready to go. And runners away. From the outside, Buff Jet begins well. In the center, here's Zamorata showing speed. Tartaletta's alongside, and another Grand Slam moves up to their inside. In fact, another, another Grand Slam will take the lead as they run out of the chute. Racing second is Tartaletta. Zamorata's on the inside. She's the gray, followed by New York Jackie and Buff Jet. And down to the rail, here's Petite Lapine moving closer. She's now, in fact, into a joint third. They run down the backstretch. They went 24 and 1 for the opening quarter speed. Another grand slam leads the way by a length. On hold while second is Zamorata toward the rail. Petite Lapine, followed by Tartaletta. Very wide out there is Buff Jet. And New York Jackie is the trailer, but they're separated by about two and a half lengths in the run to the half mile pole. From between horses, Zamorata puts in a precarious position now. We'll have to quicken up to keep her spot at the half mile and 48 seconds flat. The leader is still another grand slam. Now Zamorata has secured inside position in front of Petite Lapine third, Tartaletta fourth. Then back to the inside, New York Jackie and Buff Jet is not finding her best stride today. She's last of all in retreating with five sixteenths to go. With the lead, it's now Zamorata. Three parts of a length. She's confidently handled and moving clear. Another grand slam, second, Petite Lapine third, Tartaletta and the red on the outside. We're down to two chances. Zamorata, 113 and three for three quarters and Petite Lapine, the closest pursuer while coming off the fence. Top of the lane, Zamorata sets sail and moves away. Back to second is Petite Lapine, then New York Jackie and all the rest left in the wake of Edgar Zayas and Zamorata. Give Zayas three on the card, give Zamorata her second career victory. Zamorata by four. Petite Lapine second, New York Jackie third, then another grand slam. Tartaletta and Buff Jet. Edgar Zayas confidently rides Zamorata to the wire in the 10th race. That's his third victory of the day. This one is for trainer Antonio Sano and owner Alfonso Camarada. Zamorata paid $4.60 to win. And here's how our exotic wagers pay today. The pick four, four of four, returned $93.80. The pick five, four of five, $8.40. Five of five, $690.95.
The Rainbow Six, six of six, $1,866.96. There will be a carryover heading into Saturday's program in the Rainbow Six of $32,914.22. That's going to do it for Friday's card. The weekend officially starts tomorrow on Saturday, and we have 11 race program on tap. That includes the ninth race, the feature of the day. It's the $75,000 Treasure Coast Stakes, a five furlong turf sprint for older males, and it's going to feature the top five finishers returning from the Bonita Stakes. That, of course, includes the top two in Sing Another Song and Do the Roar in the Bonita Stakes. Do the Roar actually finished a neck ahead of Sing Another Song, but in the stretch he drifted out and impeded his rival so he was taken down and placed second sing another song was made the winner so those two are going to have a rematch tomorrow but they're going to have to watch out for the third place finisher in the bonita stakes that is successful native from the aubrey mirage barn he was the favorite that day he came rallying strongly late and two starts back he won the turf sprint stakes here at Gulfstream. it's going to be a great day don't miss any of the action here at Gulfstream park I'll see you in 24 hours. Thanks for watching Thoroughbred Action. I'm Katie Stazak.